Hi, we're going to have a look at cache now and how it can help improve the performance of CPUs. So cache is yet another type of memory. We've got so many types of memory in our computer. We've talked about registers so far, which are tiny and they're inside the CPU. We've also talked generally about other memory, but really we mean RAM when we're talking about memory. We've also got ROM, although it's only ever used briefly in a computer, which we'll come back to later. But for now, cache is yet another type of memory. This is small and fast, that is used to hold frequently accessed instructions and data. Now, compared to registers, it is not small and fast. So cache is much bigger than a register and much slower than a register, but it is a lot smaller and a lot faster than RAM. So currently, what I've talked about so far, our CPU contains registers and we search for instructions and data by going to memory, which is effectively RAM. Now, RAM is massive and is slow. So that fetch stage can take quite a long time because I've got to go search in this other component and I've got to wait for it to be able to find what I need. So when my computer has got cache, cache sits between the CPU and memory. And nowadays cache is built into the CPU as well. So really I should have drawn this as a box inside this CPU box. But the process is when I want to go fetch instructions or fetch data, I won't go directly to RAM anymore. I'll first check cache. Hopefully my instruction or my data is in cache. If it is, it's fetched and it is much faster. If I can't find it, which is possible, it's smaller than RAM, so I may not find what I need. If I can't find it, it will then go check RAM and it will be there and then it will get returned. So cache becomes our first port of call. We check cache before we check RAM. Now, if I find what I need in cache, that is called a cache hit. If I go to cache and it's not there and I've got to go check RAM, that is called a cache miss. So because cache is a lot faster than RAM, if there is a cache hit, it will speed up the time taken to fetch. It will take less time to get my item if it is in cache. Of course, if it's not in cache, I've basically wasted my time. I've wasted time checking cache before checking RAM. So overall, it would take up more time. So therefore, if you want to use cache to improve performance, your first job is to make sure that it's actually holding things which are going to get used. So it should hold the most frequently used instructions and data. The reason why we choose the most frequently used is this means there's a greater chance of a cache hit. If we waste valuable cache capacity with something which is barely ever used, we're not going to benefit much difference at all because most of the time we'll be getting cache misses. Another way we can utilize cache to improve performance is make it bigger. Ideally, cache will be relatively big because if it's bigger, this means we've got more instructions or data which can benefit from this increase in speed. So ideally cache gets bigger. If you buy a more expensive CPU, it will have more cache. Now that is definitely the point we need to memorize that bigger cache is a good thing. However, there is a slight exception to this because people often ask, well, hang on, why do we not just make cache the size of RAM? If cache is so much better than RAM, why is it not as big as RAM? Well, cost, first of all, it's really expensive, but also if you make it too big, it will potentially slow down how fast it is because the bigger the memory is, the longer it will take to search through. So it being small is partly why it is so fast. But most of the speed is down to just clever design. And so CPU manufacturers are always trying to make their cache faster, both increasing read and write times of it. Because the benefit of this would be, it means each request will take even less time, it will be even faster. The drawback of having better cache is it's more expensive and will take up more power. So we've got a few trade-offs here between size and speed and cost and speed. So CPUs often try and get around this by having different levels of cache, which are different sizes and different speeds. So if we have say two cores in this made up CPU, well, both cores are gonna have a small, a tiny cache of their own. This is called level one cache. Level one cache is the fastest cache in a computer, but it's also the smallest, maybe only a few kilobytes in size. Because it's the fastest, it will be the most expensive. And that's partly why it's kept so small. A core might also have a slightly bigger, but slightly slower level two cache. Now, if you're the control unit managing this core, you'd prioritize your most frequently used instructions and data to go into your level one cache because it's faster. Then the slightly less important ones would go in the level two cache. It's still faster than going to RAM, but it's not quite as quick as level one cache. 
And then typically a CPU will also have level three cache. Now level three cache typically won't belong to a particular core. This will typically be shared across your whole CPU and it will be a lot bigger than level two cache. Level two cache might be a megabyte or two. Level three cache might be between 15 megabytes and 60 megabytes. Still a lot smaller than the gigabytes of RAM. And despite being faster than RAM, level three cache is slower than level two cache. So the way this would work is if you are in core number one, when you are fetching an instruction, you first check level one cache. Is it in level one cache? If it is, amazing, you've got it straight away. If it's not in level one cache, you check level two cache. If it's not in level two cache, you check level three cache. If it's not in level three cache, you've got to go all the way into RAM to see if it's there and you get it from there. So we go through the caches one by one. That's why it's really important we get our most frequently used ones in the earlier caches because they are the fastest. Now, it seems like a very complicated setup, but if it wasn't making a big difference, we would not be using such a complicated setup. So cache makes a huge difference in improving fetch speeds. If we can speed up fetch, that means we can speed up our overall execution. And fetching is almost always the slowest part of this process, which is why cache is really valuable.